Okay, let's uh, continue our discussions of the dipping layer refraction problem. Uh, you remember from the last time that we developed this uh, relationship for the time distance relationship for the dipping layer refraction, we had a, an intercept over here. Notice that we have the thickness of the layer up dip. This is the uh, thickness of the, the layer along a line drawn normal to the layer back to the source. And then we have this uh, complicated slope term here where we have the sine, theta, sine dip cosine theta critical plus cosine dip sine theta critical over V1. And uh, I think we ask you to simplify this a little bit further. And uh, in doing that, we could use uh, the identities for the sine of A plus B, in this case, sine of theta critical plus delta. Uh, kind of working backwards. We know that the sine of theta critical cosine delta plus cosine theta critical sine delta uh, is equal to the sine of theta critical plus delta. And that's basically what we have up here. So we can rewrite this expression for the time dip time uh, distance relationship. When the source is up dip, we can rewrite that uh, uh, in this uh, uh, intercept uh, slope form. <coughs> So uh, once again, we have this straight line. Uh, the slope of the straight line is sine theta critical plus delta over V1. The, we don't see a V2 in there, do we? We, we need to have V2. We, if we had V2, we could figure out what the critical angle is. Uh, how do we figure out the dip? How do we figure out HU? Those are some of the problems that we're going to have to address. So just a few comments in passing as you were developing this, uh, well, this, this expression here. Um, this term, we showed you how to reduce it using trig identities and so on. But something that as you were going through the development that you should, would have needed to notice to get it into this form would be that we'll realize that we're, we have a lot more terms in here, we're left with a lot of, lot more unknowns in the stipping layer problem than, than we did with a horizontal layer problem. Um, but to get over, to get the equation into this form, we had to recognize that, um, well, V1 over V2 is sine of theta critical. So if we want to get uh, everything over the same common denominator, you might be tempted to, well, you know, try to get a V1, V2 here and so on. but. Just recognize that V1 over V2 is the sine of theta critical, and uh, that would allow you to get the expression into this form. Again, and um, probably harp on this over and over again, is that we're always making these assumptions. We, we don't really, one of the important things in doing the refraction profiling is our, it, our profile is perpendicular to, um, to the strike of the local structure. And, you know, unless you know something about the area, that may not be the case. And if the profiles are not perpendicular, then our analysis is going to yield apparent velocities in uh, whether we're shooting from the up dip direction or the down dip direction. So assumptions, assumptions, assumptions. We always have to ask ourselves, what assumptions have we made? And in this case, we've made quite a few. So. In the slope-intercept form, we have uh, just kind of reverse the order of these terms, so a, kind of a typical y equal mx plus b. We've got our slope here, sine theta critical plus uh, delta. We have the intercept over here. This is uh, so we just have uh, we know there is some critical distance uh, beyond which we are not going to see a uh, critical refraction. A distance is a little bit closer to the source. The slope in this case is sine theta critical plus delta over V1. The intercept here is 2HU over V1, V2, square root of V2 squared minus V1 squared. So looking at the slope term, uh, the apparent velocity is the reciprocal of the slope. Remember these slopes tend to be in a 1 over a velocity type relationship. So, so we could think of this as 1 over V1 over sine theta critical plus delta, and that, that would be our apparent velocity, or 1 over V apparent. So we still have this question, what's V2? We don't know what V2 is. Uh, we have an apparent velocity 
shooting from the uh, down dip uh, or from the up dip direction. We also know what the intercept is, but again, we don't know what V2 is. We don't know what HU is. We don't know what delta is. So again, we have all these unknowns left to uh, left to figure out. And uh, so, j just a note on the nomenclature and the terminology that I'll use. Uh, I'll be referring to the up dip uh, direction as the direction where the shot is located. So if we're talking about uh, the time t sub u would be referring to the time distance relationship with the source in the up dip uh, direction. T sub d would be referring to time distance relationship with the source in the down dip direction. So uh, may refer to down dip shooting and that would be the direction in which the ray paths are going. Source would be up dip. Um, so I would generally refer to up dip source and down dip shooting or shooting down dip something like that. So hopefully it's not uh, hope, hopefully the nomenclature terminology is not too confusing. Um, it always is though so we just have to make sure that we spend time when we're looking inside a textbook or listening to, to a video to be familiarize ourselves with the terminology, the notation. So here we have the source in the down dip direction. So we're shooting up dip. Our ray paths are going from the source up dip to the receiver. So we have this idea of up dip and down dip shooting and uh, I'm typically using up dip and down dip to note the position of the source. So just to note some differences in the up dip and the down dip uh, travel times, we've developed this expression for the up dip travel time. Notice that we have our up dip thickness. This would be the thickness of the layer along a line drawn in normal instance to the dipping interface from the source. That would be our HU. Same down here, we're extending a line down into the sub subsurface at normal instance uh, on the dipping interface, the dipping refractor from the receiver in this case. So HU is our up dip thickness and this, the reciprocal of this is the apparent velocity that we see when we're shooting when our source is in the up dip direction. Likewise, we have an expression for the down dip uh, time distance relationship. The notice of, so that we have a sign change here in the argument for the sign uh, theta critical minus delta instead of theta critical plus delta. And if we collect data from both the up dip and the down dip direction, uh, we are going to get information that is going to allow us to determine V2, the dip, the thickness up dip the thickness down dip. But again, only if these profiles are perpendicular to strike. So there's another assumption that we have to make. Now the critical distance, uh, just want to mention this, we'll talk about it later, but when we kind of draw the, the two profiles together or superimpose them on the same uh, plot, but the critical distance in the down dip direction, this, uh, the distance out to the point where we first see a critically refracted layer off the uh, refracting interface when the layer is dipping off to the right here, is going to be less than the critical distance, the distance out to the point where we first see a critically refracted ray when the source is down dip. So we kind of expect when we're putting together these uh, plots and we'll be putting together these plots on a uh, kind of a combined uh, graph and where we show both the up dip and the down dip responses plotted together. So we'll expect to see differences in slope associated with the differences in the apparent velocities. Uh, we'll expect to see differences in the distance out along the surface at which the refractions first show up. We'll see differences in the intercept time shooting from the up dip and the down dip direction and so on. And so for next time what I'd like for you to think about is and you know refer to your um, to whatever text you may be using and uh, think about how these the up dip and the down dip uh, profiles are going to differ
from each other, how they're going to look different in this uh, when they're plotted together in this uh, combined time distance plot. So once again, thanks for uh, joining us and we'll see you next time.